Hi everybody, welcome to Southampton Vampire by Night. Um, this is one of our informal crew chats. So um, I'm Mark White, the project lead, and I'm joined today uh, by Mr. B, um, who's uh, one of the vets. Um, yeah, so Stu, actually I'm introducing you, you should be introducing yourself. Go for it, mate. Hello, uh, I'm Stuart, um, uh, Mr. B. I am one of the content creators uh, for Southampton Vampire by Night. Um, and as Mark has said, I'm also uh, a person who's been playing Vampire, uh, tabletop, LARP and uh, card game for a very, very long time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Almost, tw well, yeah, over 20 years of playing the game, in fact. So, you know, so yeah, Stu, for every, everybody who, well, Stu's who got me into Vampire. So uh, about 15, 15 or so years ago, Stu kind of got me and um, brought me along to a Vampire LARP that he was running uh, named UKM um and um ever since then i've been hooked love vampire um and the world and all basically all of my experience of vampire has come from Stu and the other ref team that's built, built up around him and so um yeah basically i owe all of this to kind of him so but Stu will admit both of us i believe are v20 we are that's what we've been brought up that's the bread and butter so when v5 came along i've got to admit i didn't really look because i was invested in the game that Stu was running and that game was set in a kind of v20 universe so recently though um within our project we as a crew have decided we're going v5 so the question i'm going to be asking Stu tonight and what we're going to be covering is why we're going to v5 um, yeah, so as Mark said, I've kind of played Vampire Tabletop anyway, since most iterations of the game, you know, First Dead, Revised Edition, 20th Anniversary Edition and stuff like that. And 20th Anniversary was where, where I kind of stopped because if I'm being completely honest, I was getting a bit burnt out with the game. I'd been playing it, running the live games, running tabletop games for an awfully long time. And it was all getting a bit heavy. Um, so when we started this project, um, I kind of came at the project that Mark wanted to work on with the same kind of, um, almost the same hang-ups I'd had from running previous LARP games. Because I'd been running a weekly game um, on and off for, like Mark said, over 15 years. Yeah. Between myself and other people running Southampton as a game and other games being run in other domains that you would visit and play in. I got to a point where I was kind of burnt out and stuff like that, but... Whilst we were looking at setting things up for the game, I started looking at the new 5th edition product. And for me, it was kind of like a nice change of pace. Um, whilst we're not going to be running, you know, V5 as a tabletop LARP, we're going to run LARP with the Mind's Eye Theatre rules. We're going to hopefully move it to a V5 setting specific kind of timeline. Yeah. Because for me, V5 is very much a nice fresh start for new players it doesn't have the immense amount of baggage law and meta plot that all the previous books bring you because if you started vampire back in you know first edition to vampire you had one core rule book and it kind of explained what the clans were and not all the clans were included yet some of them would come out later on in the player's guide would give you four more clans and then the sabbat guide would give you a couple more clans and eventually you'd get to the point where you had all these clans and then there'd be some bloodlines and there'd be a book with another bloodline in it and there'd be yeah. and it just kept building and building and building it became this like mammoth creation that was a wonderful achievement of world building yeah but if you came at it from the point of view of being new to the whole thing you could get, you could completely lose what the game was actually about which is personal interpersonal horror because you're so caught up in this whole Gehenna, Book of Nod, all this sort of stuff is going on. So V5 for me kind of clears the decks a bit and went, okay, you know, we're going to not have all the clans initially in the first book. We're going to cut down on the bloodlines. We're going to remove, you know, the, the differentiation between like elders and, you know, neonates. So young characters and older, more powerful characters by sort of changing the dynamics of how the game goes. We're going to make 
make it less about the Camarilla versus the Sabat and more about the Camarilla versus the Anarchs and less of a let's burn things down and destroy the world Sabat conflict and more of a political ideologies conflict between Camarilla and Anarchs. And for me, my point with a live game is I think a Camarilla versus Anarchs game works nicely from a political point of view. If well, there's definitely. conflict between the factions, it's conflict of an ideology. It could come down to a fist fight. You know, it could come down to an, an argument that turns into a brawl. But it can also be a fight of words, of minds and hearts, where you're trying to convince the other side that they're wrong or that they're not necessarily on the right track. And I think that works more for a live game than yep. a Camarilla Sabat conflict, which is the age-old conflict of the previous editions, as yeah, it were. Well for me it was always that um i was brought up with the kind of thing of you know when the sabbat turned up they're there for a reason they're there to attack they're there to ki kidnap kill destruction that's the reason why they were ever with a camera at court unless for some random reason they were there to negotiate because you wanted you to then attack another sabbat pack or something but at least all the anarch encounters i had were more to do they were more political that, that sometimes broke down into those fist fights but most of the time they were just political words being thrown back and forth i've got to admit there was a couple of times some of my characters did consider just joining the anarchs because some of the arguments that were coming back and forth made a lot of sense and uh yeah so i i agree i think that v5 swapping it over to more anarchs camarilla also opens loads more options for storytellers and for us as as world ref storytellers you name it it it's going to make the courts more engaging and more dynamic um yeah it's gonna be cool I, the aim is to if we have an anarch faction player base and a camarilla faction player base they can be in the same place and exist, coexist next to each other with different ideologies, but with, you know, almost peacefully. Whereas if we divided the city between Sabat and Camarilla factions, oh, yeah. you know, what's stopping the players just going to war with each other in the first game? And, and like, what's yeah, yeah. you know, I think I just like fifth ed in vampire as a, like, I think I've said it before. It's just a brush of fresh air. It wipes the table clean and it gives any new player to the game a very fresh start um you know it's just that level of playing field that you don't need 20 years worth of history of the game to know what's going on right now yeah. in the v5 yeah. timeline and it, it also gives older players like you know it gives older players a, a new something new to get your teeth into i mean at the end of the day guys you've been playing v20 via met larp or tabletop and stuff like this for 20 plus years you know and then v5 comes along and it changes things up and i know for me personally i looked at it and went to start off with it's changed things up none of this makes sense ministry what the and balahakim and and what they doing with this and the ravnos i was like oh i don't know i don't know but that's the whole point of it because i get to learn all that stuff in play again i get new surprises i get to find out about you know new stuff new content um yeah. and i get to do it at the same time as a new player which is something that's really important because we we love the new blood coming into this hobby is what we need. Um, yeah. and, and it's that's going to be the survival of this hobby is new blood. Um, so, the pun. yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We need some yeah, neonates, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, I mean, we can't all be ancillas. So I yeah. think I think that this is definitely, uh, for us as game designers, going to V5 just makes sense because that's the direction the game's going to be going in across the board. Just look at it. Bloodlines 2 is going to be in a V5 universe or set in a V5 universe. So that's going to attract new players and that's what they're going to experience. Like the same way I experienced bloodlines one and, and went, Oh, this is really cool. And I love Nosferatu. They're epic. Um, all came out of playing that game, but that was V20. Yeah. So now the experience is going to be V V5 for those players. Um, you think of all the other games that are coming out at the moment, they're all set in that V5 universe. So it makes sense from a, like a game designer to, or like, well, well, LARP organizer to kind of, if you can change over to that um, because it's so, it's so much easier for a new player to experience that content and then identify your content with that. Um, yeah. So yeah. Like if you need, if you need a splat book, there's the V5 book, you know, you don't need to worry about the rules or anything like that. Mechanically, Minds Eye Theatre rules are different. Yeah. Different situation. But in terms of, 
the actual setting world, it's all there in the one simple book. And then you can diversify and read a bit about the Camarilla, a bit about the Anarchs, but you don't need to go into looking at obscure books, obscure out of print stuff nope. or a single bloodline no one really ever heard of. And honestly, I was, I've got to admit, um, I bought all the books. And unlike uh, Chris and Stu, who managed to just blitz through them and, and digest all the information, I'm I'm a slow reader um, and I get distracted. But what I can say is from what I've seen of the V5 like core rule book, um, I was really impressed with what I've read so far. Um, the, the Just at the beginning of the book where it kind of has that kind of um, consent where they're talking about, you know, role play and what that means and... Um, you know, stuff like that. It's definitely worth a read. I love all of the, they've thrown in kind of loads of um, uh, diary entries and other bits of information and stuff that are kind of world building that you can read and go, oh, that sounds interesting. You know what I mean? It's, it's, I don't know. There's loads of little bits that I've seen so far that I've been quite impressed. And also they've done a really cool thing about the clan imagery as well, the fashions, um, which is a big thing for me. I love the fact that clans don't have uniforms. They don't have costumes. They have fashions. Uh, yeah. And they've portrayed that in the book beautifully. Um, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I do love the old artwork from the old books. The old <laughs> yeah, I know you do. <laughs> it's, it's fab. Um, you know, <laughs> like the old covers to the clan books, oh. Tim Bradstreet stuff, really, really evocative images for the time. But also, yeah, the new art books, the new art in the new book, sorry. Yeah, it's really, really good. I'd like the fact that it's, got, yeah, it's gone for a full colour look. It's modernised yeah. it. It's just a much, much smoother looking set of rules. Um, yeah. And a, a much, it's a much smoother, easier to read you know, way of getting into the setting. Yeah. And bringing, as you said, new blood to the game, which is something the game will need. Yeah. Right. So I think that covers the question. So um, what we do there, guys, is we're going to wrap this one up. Um, but hopefully... Um, we've kind of explained the reason why Southampton Vampire Bar Night is going to be going V5 with this question. Um, if you out there have um, any questions that you want to ask any of the crew, please post them in the comments below. And of course, we'll answer them just like this. Um, and hopefully we've inspired you guys to go out there and get a V5 book and read it. Um, or just ask someone who knows about it um, because trust me, it is, it is definitely worth the read and it's definitely worth having a look at um so yeah thanks for uh joining us and Stu, thank you very much for um for being here as well mate always welcome mate cool and with that um we'll see you again soon all right cheers bye cheers <laughs>